Tennessee football is in a very interesting spot. They're coming off a breakout season in year one under Josh Heupel, and they have a quarterback who is a dark horse Heisman contender. The style of offense will allow Tennessee to put up a lot of points, but how will they fare in their schedule, how will their defense be, and what can we expect from the 2022 season? Well, in today's video, you're going to get your answers as we're going to preview the roster, talk about who's coming back, what their record will be, and what we can expect from the Volunteers this year. So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. In order to understand how Tennessee will do in 2022, we first need to talk about 2021. Going into last year, Josh Heupel moved from UCF to Tennessee and took the head coaching job. There was a three-man quarterback battle between Harrison Bailey, Joe Milton, and Hendon Hooker, and Joe Milton would get the start in their week one game against Bowling Green. In week two, he struggled against Pittsburgh, and because of that, they lost 41 to 34. Pitt ended up being really good, but at the time, Tennessee fans were not very happy about that one. In week three, they'd take care of Tennessee Tech before they would get outmatched by number 11, Florida. This game did not age very well, as the Gators really fell apart towards the end of the year. From there, they decided to go with Hendon Hooker, and he went off in their next game. Of course, it was against my Missouri Tigers, as Tennessee handed Mizzou one of the worst losses in school history, as Tennessee won 62-24 against the Tigers. The following week, they go back home and play against South Carolina, where they'd easily take care of the Gamecocks 45-20. At this point, they were 4-2, and, and it seems like they were in a really good spot. Number 13, Ole Miss came to town as Lane Kiffin would reunite with his old fan base. Emotion definitely got the best of some Volunteers fans as they started to throw stuff on the field, which included the famous golf ball and the famous bottle of mustard. After a controversial play, Ole Miss won 31-26, and Tennessee suffered their third loss of the year. They actually put up a decent fight against Alabama, but by the end of the game, the Tide rolled away and won that game pretty easily. They were 4-4 four and four and would have to win two of their last three games to make a bowl game. Thankfully, the next week, they went on the road and beat number 18 Kentucky 45-42 and got to win number 5. After that, number 1 Georgia came to town, a game I was actually at, and while it was close in the first half, the Dogs pulled away in the second half and handed the Vols their fifth loss. They clinched bowl eligibility with a win over South Alabama, and then in the final week of action, they killed Vanderbilt. The Volunteers ended up going 7-5, and, and they would get a bid to play in the Music City Bowl. Call it great offense or really bad defense, the 2022 Music City Bowl between Purdue and Tennessee was one of the most thrilling games of the 2022 season. It went back and forth, and there was huge play after huge play, but after an extremely controversial play in which a Tennessee running back was called down due to forward progress, Purdue got the ball back, kicked a field goal, and won 48-45, leaving Tennessee with a 7-6 record and a sour taste in their mouth to end the year. Overall, though, Tennessee fans were very happy with the progress under year one of Heupel. Hendon Hooker emerged as one of the better quarterbacks in the nation, and there was a lot of hype going into 2022. So, let's take a look at the roster and how their schedule is going to look. When you take a look at Tennessee's roster, we first have to start with who they're going to lose. They ended up losing five players to the NFL, which included their top corner, Alante Taylor, their second best receiver, Velas Jones, their top defensive tackle, Matthew Butler, their top offensive lineman, Cade Mays, and safety, Theo Jackson. All five of those guys were great, but they should have the talent and the players to replace them. When you take a look at their recruiting class, it was a little bit underwhelming. They finished number 24 overall according to 24-7 Sports, and it was headlined by four-star offensive lineman Addison Nichols, four-star defensive lineman Tyree West, and four-star quarterback Taven Jackson. When you take a look at their transfer class, they originally landed Isaiah Nayor from Wyoming, but he later flipped to Texas. Because of that, they went out and got Brew McCoy from USC, who in case you didn't know was a former five-star receiver. They got Andre Turrentine, a corner from Ohio State, Wesley Walker, a safety from Georgia Tech, and an offensive lineman from Florida by the name of Gerald Mincy. I'm not overly impressed with the transfer portal haul, but they did get some key pieces. When you take a look at the quarterback spot, that is definitely their best position as they return their superstar guy, Hendon Hooker. Hendon Hooker really blew up last year. He threw for 2,945 yards, 31 touchdowns, and only had three interceptions. To go along with that, he also ran for 620 yards and five touchdowns and was truly one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the nation. It's even more impressive based on the fact that he only started halfway through the year, but he will return this year with lofty expectations and could be the best quarterback Tennessee has seen in a long time. Behind him, you're going to have Joe Milton, who started last year and was formerly at Michigan, and then you'll also have true freshman four-star recruit Taven Jackson. It seems like Hooker will be number one, Milton will be number two, and Jackson will be number three. Then you have Navy Schuler, who transferred in from Appalachian State. When you take a look at the running back spot, it is a little bit thin, but they have one of the better returning backs in the conference. That guy was Jabari Small, as he had nearly 700 yards and 9 touchdowns in his first year as a starter last year. From there, they'll need to find a number 2 option, and that'll come from 4 different players. 
the first of which is Jalen Wright, who was second on the team last year. True freshman four-star recruit Justin Williams, sophomore Lenneth Whitehead, and true freshman Dylan Sampson will all get an opportunity to get on the field. When you take a look at the wide receiver spot, they obviously lost Javante Payton and Valus Jones, but they do return their top receiver from last year in Cedric Tillman. He passed on the NFL and will definitely be Hooker's number one player this year. From there, the next two guys will more than likely be Jalen Hyatt and Brew McCoy, and after that you'll have Jimmy Calloway and Ramel Keaton, and I expect those five guys to be the main targets for Hendon. They will want more depth though, and you can expect all four of the true freshmen to get a chance to play and prove their worth. I'm a little concerned about the depth at both the running back and wide receiver spot, but they also have a couple of good tight ends, and they return four starting offensive linemen, so they will have time to get that fixed. In terms of the defense, it wasn't great last year, but it also wasn't the worst in the nation. They will need to find a good pass rusher, but they return their top two leading tacklers at the linebacker spot and have a couple of guys at corner who really started to merge towards the end of the year. While pass coverage was not great, especially in the Music City Bowl, I'm not too worried about the secondary as they return their starting safeties, and overall I expect Tennessee's defense to be about the same or a little bit better than last year. So how will that fare in terms of the schedule? Let's go ahead and take a look. In week one, they will stay home in Neyland Stadium and play against Ball State. While the Cardinals did win the MAC two years ago, they are not looking very good right now, and Tennessee will have this game done by halftime. Week two is a pretty big game, and one of those games I could see going either way. Last year, Pitt came into Neyland Stadium and won, and this year, I think not only Tennessee is the better team, but they are going to get revenge and cruise to 2 0 with a win in Pittsburgh. In week three, they come home and play Akron, which will be a win. And then in week four, they have another 50-50 game. This one will come against Billy Napier's Florida Gators, and Florida has really owned this series as of late. While I do really love Napier, and I think this game will be close, I'm going to give the slight edge to Tennessee in this one and move the Volunteers to 4-0. After that, I have somewhat of a controversial pick, as LSU fans won't be happy, but I do believe Tennessee is the better team compared to LSU, and I think they're going to go on the road to Baton Rouge and win a close one. Their luck will run out, though. As the following week, Bama comes to town, and I think Bama will kill the Volunteers, as always. They will get the bowl eligibility the next week, as they'll play against Tennessee Martin, and then things start to get a little bit more difficult, as they get Kentucky and Georgia. Kentucky is my pick to finish second in the SEC East, and Tennessee always seems to beat them in close games, so this year, I think it's finally going to change, and Kentucky will have their best team in a long time, and will beat Tennessee. After that, as much as I would like to see Tennessee beat Georgia, that is not going to happen, and that game will be over by halftime, which will move the Volunteers to three losses. Thankfully, their next few games aren't that difficult, as they'll play against Missouri at home, which I think they will win. They'll go on the road to South Carolina, which I think they will win, and they'll go on the road to Vanderbilt, which I think they will win. That moves the Volunteers to a 9-3 record and a third-place finish in the SEC East behind Georgia and Kentucky. Honestly, I see their ceiling at 10 wins, but games against Pitt, Florida, LSU, and South Carolina may not be that easy, and if a couple things go wrong, the Volunteers could find themselves around the cut line for making a bowl once again. I do believe they are an 8-9 win team though, and maybe they're overrated, or maybe they're not, but I love Hendon Hooker, I like Josh Heupel's system, and I think they have the pieces to have a good team this year. What do you guys think though? If you're a Tennessee fan, what do you think the team's record will be, and what are your expectations for the team? If you're a fan of another school, also give me your thoughts on Tennessee, and let me know what team I should do in my next video. And also don't forget to drop any video topic as I read all the comments, and I definitely like to make more of these. Before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you are new, and check out all of the videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.